When it comes to space as a whole, we don't know as much as we would like to think we do. Granted, we have seen many things, but we haven't seen everything, not by a very long shot. That's why NASA and others have been working for decades to try and fill in the blanks about what we know and don't know about space so that we can figure it out better. There are plenty of theories as to what might be out there. For one telescope, it might be the key to proving them. Allow us to show you how the James Webb Space Telescope is finally proving the existence of white holes. In general relativity, a white hole is a hypothetical region of space-time and singularity that cannot be entered from the outside. Although energy matter, light, and information can escape from it. In this sense, it is the reverse of a black hole, which can be entered only from the outside and from which energy matter, light, and information cannot escape. White holes appear in the theory of eternal black holes. In addition to a black hole region in the future, such a solution of the Einstein field equations has a white hole region in its past. This region does not exist for black holes that have formed through gravitational collapse. However, nor are there any observed physical processes through which a white hole can be formed. Supermassive black holes, SBHs, are theoretically predicted to be at the center of every galaxy and that possibly a galaxy cannot form without one. Stephen Hawking and others have proposed that these SBHs spawn a supermassive white hole slash Big Bang. Like black holes, white holes have properties like mass, charge, and angular momentum. They attract matter like any other mass, but objects falling towards a white hole would never actually reach the white hole's event horizon. Though in a case of maximally extended Schwarzschild solution, the white hole event horizon in the past becomes a black hole event horizon in the future. Imagine a gravitational field without a surface. Acceleration due to gravity is the greatest on the surface of any body. But since black holes lack a surface, acceleration due to gravity increases exponentially, but never reaches a final value as there is no considered surface in a singularity. In quantum mechanics, the black hole emits Hawking radiation so it can come to thermal equilibrium with a gas of radiation, not compulsory. Because a thermal equilibrium state is a time reversal invariant. Stephen Hawking argued that the time reversal of a black hole in thermal equilibrium results in a white hole in thermal equilibrium, each absorbing and admitting energy to equivalent degrees. Consequently, this may imply that black holes and white holes are the same structure, wherein the Hawking radiation from an ordinary black hole is identified with a white hole's emission of energy and matter. Hawking's semi-classical argument is reproduced in a quantum mechanical ADS-CFT treatment, where a black hole in anti-de Sitter space is described by a thermal gas in a gauge theory whose time reversal is the same as itself. As you can see, that's very complicated. And that's why many wonder if white holes exist. We know black holes exist because we've seen them in space and have seen their effects on various objects. But in terms of actually witnessing a white hole, not so much. To a spaceship crew watching from afar, a white hole looks exactly like a black hole. It has mass. It might spin. A ring of dust and gas could gather around the event horizon, the bubble boundary separating the object from the rest of the universe. If they kept watching, the crew might witness an event impossible for a black hole. It's only in the moment when things come out that you can say, ah, this is a white hole said Carlo Rovelli, a theoretical physicist at the Centre de Physique Theorique in France. What's more, it should be noted that it took literal decades to get a full grasp on a black hole, and we still don't know everything about them. So now you try and apply that to white holes, and you see the problem we're having here. But many are thinking that the James Webb Telescope that is now up and running might be able to change things. Why? Because it's a really powerful telescope that might just be able to help change things up for the better. The web represents the culmination of decades, if not centuries of astronomy, said Sarah Seeger, a planetary scientist and astrophysicist at MIT. We've been waiting for this for a very long time. Scientists started thinking about a follow-up even before the Hubble Space Telescope launched in 1990. After more than three decades in space, it's unclear how much longer this boundary-breaking satellite will be able to scan and photograph the universe. 
The web was originally supposed to launch in 2010 and cost around $1 billion. Its price tag ballooned $10 billion and it's way overdue. But the wait will be worth it, at least according to the scientists who expect new and revealing glimpses of our universe. We're going right up to the edge of the observable universe with Webb, says Caitlin Casey, an assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Texas at Austin. And yeah, we're excited to see what's there. The Webb will surpass the Hubble in several ways. It will allow astronomers to look not only farther out in space, but also further back in time. It will search for the first stars and galaxies of the universe. It will allow scientists to make careful studies of numerous exoplanets planets that orbit stars other than our sun, and even embark on a search for signs of life out there. The web is a machine for answering unanswered questions about the universe, for exploring what has been unexplorable until now. And yes, that would also include white holes. The web improves on the Hubble in two key ways. The first is just its size. Hubble was about the size of a school bus, whereas Webb is more like the size of a tennis court. This thing is enormous. One scientist says, Webb is by far the biggest telescope NASA's ever attempted to send into space. But it's not just the total size of the contraption that matters. When it comes to reflecting telescopes, the key component is the size of its curved mirror. You could sort of think of a telescope mirror like a light bucket. The more light you can collect in this bucket, the fainter and further away things you can see in the universe. Hubble's mirror was an impressive 7.8 feet in diameter. Webb's beautiful gold-hued mirrors combined for a diameter of 21.3 feet. Overall, that amounts to more than six times the light collecting area. What does this mean in practice? Well, consider one of Hubble's most famous images, the deep field. In 1995, scientists set the Hubble to stare off into a teeny tiny patch of sky, about the size of the head of a pinhead, held at arm's length from the viewer and capture as much light as it could from that one spot. The image that came back was astounding. Hubble uncovered thousands of galaxies in this teensy patch of sky, helping us refine the number of galaxies thought to exist in the universe. In astronomy, the further away things are, the older they are, because light from faraway places takes a very long time to travel to Earth. That means this Hubble deep field is not only a snapshot of space, it also contains the history of our universe. Galaxies in this image appear to us as they were billions of years ago. What Webb will do is take that field and go even further. UT Austin's Casey explains. So the tiny specks of light in the background of the Hubble deep field will brighten and become more detailed. We'll be able to see spiral arms. We'll be able to see structure. And then we'll get more specks of light even further in the past. We're seeing farther back in time with Webb. So given the power of this telescope, you can see why so many people are excited to see what it might bring to the table and how it might be able to see things like white holes for the first time, or at the very least, prove that they aren't as theoretical as some have stated. Will it find proof of one? We can't say. No, really, we can't say because we don't know all that's out there in space. But what we can say is that if there was a device that might be able to prove it, it's that James Webb telescope. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the potential existence of the white hole and how the James Webb telescope might just be the device to help prove that this can exist out in space? Do you think that the James Webb telescope will help prove this theory correct? What else might it find out in space? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.